Newtown. If there wasn't a chance, you know, we wonder if something's happened. But you have to remember, the major movements that happen in this nation and globally happen and change happens with kids, our young kids, our young people. So let's see, they've got the energy when we are older and cynical and like, yeah, well, but you know, our major movements from civil rights to what's happened over, over around the world across the seas when, when they were threatening to take Facebook away. Who was it? The young people. The yeah. yeah. You know, Amanda, the, uh, some, some Floridians have suggested to me they're deeply concerned right now, potentially, as far as tourism to Florida is concerned, so much of the economy in Florida, tourists coming in, relaxing, whether in South Florida, uh, other parts of Florida. Uh, and given the gun laws that currently exist in Florida, people are wondering, uh, is it worth it to go to Florida right now from New York or California or other states up uh, uh, in the northern part of the country, uh, if they don't, unless they go ahead and, uh, and tighten up some of these gun restrictions. Yeah, I've got to tell you, last week when you interviewed the Florida governor, you pressed him repeatedly about why someone can purchase a rifle at the age of 18 and have to wait until they're 21 for a handgun. He couldn't articulate the reason for that. Um, the reason is because you can conceal a handgun. You shouldn't be able to conceal a rifle. But that's no longer true. This young man concealed the rifle and then came into the school and unloaded it. And so for people to have a construction debate, a constructive debate about gun policy, they have to know the details. These details matter and they're important. And so you need to be able to explain why that, why that exists and why it might be time to change it. And along with that, you have to take a look at the AR-15. This is a highly customizable weapon. Do we want to allow people to be able to customize them to make them more lethal in a way that circumvents federal law? We need to drill down on these specifics. And you oh. have children who are afraid to go to school. Exactly. Yes. That I mean, that's is kind the of the We're bottom line. send them to school, which includes me right now. That's, yeah. and, 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 that's, and me as well as, yeah. And that's the bottom line here. It's the children who are afraid to go and the parents who are afraid to send them. Mm -hmm. And these are articulate young people. Yes, they are. Who can mm. can describe their fear and what you know and, and I think that the politicians have to kind of listen to that at a certain point. Mm -hmm. But you're right. But but we are a reactionary society. And it's not the adults that's reacting. It's these kids getting on a bus saying we're not going to take this anymore. Yep. And you're absolutely these, right. These kids are amazing. Yeah. And, uh, and if something happens, you give these kids the credit. Yes. Uh, because they really are uh, really doing an amazing job. Yeah. Everybody, stand with us. Stand by, uh, April, uh, Amanda, and Gloria. Uh, a program reminder to all of our viewers here in the United States and around the world as the students demand action on gun violence. Don't miss our CNN Live Town Hall. It's uh, called Stand Up. It'll be hosted by our own Jake Tapper tomorrow night. 9 p.m. Eastern, you're going to want to see this town hall. President Obama is a former national security advisor. He's standing by to join us live. Uh, he'll respond to President Trump's uh, claim uh, that uh, he's tougher on Russia than Obama was. Also, Donald Trump Jr. now visiting India to sell luxury apartments, but critics say he's dangerously close to violating ethical rules. We'll discuss that. And a dramatic rescue of a toddler, all caught on video as the Syrian regime escalates attacks against civilians, including hundreds of children. CNN takes you inside. We'll be right back. The indictments actually show a lack of collusion on the part of his campaign. Joining us now to discuss this and more, Tom Donlin. He's a former national security advisor to President Obama. Tom, thanks very much for coming in. So when you hear... Yeah. Uh, the current president attacked the former president, his predecessor, for uh, and, and insisting that he has done more to go after Russia than President Obama did. Your reaction? My reaction is that it, uh, it's, it's the most inexplicable aspect of President Trump's foreign policy is his refusal to acknowledge the actions Russia has taken against the United States, to criticize Putin, to enforce sanctions, and, and by contrast, of course, just to set the facts straight, uh, is that. President Obama did initiate, and the intelligence community and the law enforcement community initiated intensive investigations during 2016 uh, into what Russia was up to. They confronted the Russians. On October 7th of 2016, senior officials issued an extraordinary statement in the middle of a campaign that the Russian Federation was responsible for hacking emails and releasing them strategically. Uh, we then had, uh, in December of, of 2016, sanctions put on Russia by the Obama administration. 
On January 6th, you had this another extraordinary statement, a high competition. midway, at least midway through 2016 and near the end of his presidency to take these very strong measures against the Russians. What the indictment says, and by the way, the indictment's an extraordinary document. It's a speaking indictment. A 35 pages. Yes, and essentially what uh, uh, Mr. Mueller has done, Director Mueller has done, is done what the U U.S. government should be doing, right, which is to basically lay Facts here uh, for the for the American people. What the indictment says is that discussions within the Russian government began in 2014 and 2015, uh, and the actions took place in 2000 in the 2016 election. Yeah, but uh, even cycle. even Adam Schiff, the ranking Democrat yeah. on the House Intelligence Committee, says President Obama could have done more. Uh, but I have to tell you, in the 13 months that President Trump has been in office, he really hasn't done anything. Uh, he signed into law this, uh, this, uh, this uh, legislation overwhelmingly passed by the House and Senate to increase sanctions on Russia because of its meddling. It's now the law of the land, but he really hasn't implemented it. Well, two things happened. In the summer, the uh, Congress put in place legislation to restrict President Trump from relieving Russia the sanctions because there wasn't any trust in the executive branch on this because of his statements and the and the oddity of his not criticizing the Russian Federation and it did put in place the power for the administration to put additional sanctions on Russia if it were needed to deter them the administration bizarrely said they were deterred and no additional sanctions were needed uh, and of course we now know last week hit the entire uh, set of intelligence chiefs of the United States government went forward and said, in fact, they haven't been deterred. It's continuing. And the and scary it will thing continue, is they said. it's going to continue into this election. And I wanted, to, I wanted to add one thing on this. It is part of a broader strategic problem. We are in an actively hostile posture with the Russians across the board at this point, And it needs to be confronted, whether it's in Crimea and Ukraine, Europe generally. Afghanistan with the supporting the Taliban. Yeah. Afghanistan with the supporting the Taliban. Obama, the current National Security Advisor, General H.R. McMaster. He's an active duty three-star yeah. general. Uh, he spoke at a conference in Munich the other day, uh, and he basically said what the Russians did and what they're doing uh, is beyond a doubt. Uh, the president went after him publicly in a statement on Twitter. Yeah. President Trump uh, wrote this. General McMaster forgot to say that the results of the 2016 election were not impacted or changed by the Russians and that the only collusion was between Russia and crooked H, Hillary, the DNC, and the Dems. W when the president you know, slaps his own national security advisor, a, a, a serving three-star general, a lieutenant general, uh, like that publicly, uh, as a former national security advisor, what goes through your mind? Well, it's extraordinary, right, to really to kind of pull the rug out from under your national security advisor, who was at a prominent security conference in Europe. In Munich. Uh, in Munich, and said really things that are obvious, right? I mean, what, what, it, what General McMaster said is that the controvertible given what uh, Director Mueller had laid out. It was not really a controversial statement. It needed to be said, and it was really uncalled for, I think, extraordinary. What McMaster said is that the controvertible, given what uh, Director Mueller had laid out, it was not really a controversial statement. It needed to be said, and it was really uncalled for, I think, extraordinary. Which, yeah. which General McMaster did do. And then the president uh, were to tweet or to issue a statement yeah. saying, you know, Tom Donilon should have said X, Y, and Z. What would you have done? Well, then that wouldn't have happened, right? I mean, you would have had coordinated statements, right? And this is a big problem this administration. There's a distance between what responsible national security officials say and what the president says. And so it, it, gives, a, it gives a lot of uncertainty to the world because you don't know where, what to make of it. Uh, at the end of the day, you don't know who speaks for who really speaks for him. This so one last thing I wanted to say about this is a, also, I think, an important challenge here. Um, as I said, I think we have, a, we have a serious challenge to our system, 
to the West by the Russians and others in the, in the world. And the president's failure uh, to confront it is a really a serious problem. And a, a big part of the problem is that he as president has the platform to speak about this, yeah. uh, to talk about the challenges, to do things that could, that could really make us a lot more resilient in terms of digital literacy, in terms, I think, of civic education, but more generally in terms of reminding us what the values are that we're trying and, to protect. And the interesting you know, thing, that's the, that's the bully pulpit. His, his, his aides, his national security team, all of them are anxious to do that. He's mm -hmm. the only one who's reluctant to do it for whatever reason. These guys, you know, again, the, the, the intelligence chiefs went in front of the uh, Senate uh, Intelligence Committee last week, an right. extraordinary set of statements, right, and were asked if the And we're asked if the ...double fronts in the first briefing since the school massacre down in Florida and the Russian indictments. You're going to hear uh, that news conference coming up live. Stand by for that. We'll see what the press secretary, Sarah, in major scandal. Uh, President Trump's lawyer claimed he personally paid $100 thirty thousand dollars to Stormy Daniels, the ex-porn star who allegedly had an affair with uh, President uh, Trump, uh, uh, then a private citizen. paid $130,000 to Stormy Daniels, the ex-porn star who allegedly had an affair with uh, President uh, Trump, uh, then a private citizen. Later, the Russia probe intensified dramatically when Robert Mueller uh, indicted 13 Russians on charges of conspiring to defraud the United States. Then the president goes on a Twitter rant over the weekend, hitting on everything from the FBI to the Russia probe, uh, even on Oprah Winfrey. Uh, CNN's politics reporter and editor-at-large, Chris Eliza, is joining us right now. Chris, certainly a lot has happened That's since amazing. that la last White House briefing. You've got five questions you'd like to see answered Yeah, today. I mean, look, to your point, Wolf, there's more than five, but let's go through the top five. So number one, and I think this is the one that's going to be on most people's list, is Donald Trump and the gun debate. So over the weekend, Sunday night, uh, the White House made clear that Donald Trump supported legislation that was offered last year in response to the Sutherland Spring shooting in Texas. John Cornyn, a Republican from Texas, Chris Murphy, a Democrat, very outspoken uh, Democrat from Connecticut on gun issues. That would close some more background check loopholes. To me, the question is, how far is he willing to go? Saying you support it is one thing. There's a reason that we haven't had gun legislation in quite some time. So how much capital does the president want to put in? So I think that's sort of number one in everyone's mind, particularly as we're watching shootings. Number two, Rachel Crooks. This is a woman in 2006 said that Donald Trump forcibly kissed her, groped her on the 24th floor of Trump Tower. The Washington Post, my old colleague Eli Sass. colleague Eli Sass. It doesn't seem to me we're getting the full story timeline from John Kelly about how this was handled. Remember, Rob Porter, extremely close to the president, literally handing him documents every single day. He didn't have a security clearance. Why? Was he fired? Did he resign? We need more. <laughs> Donald Trump tweets, well, we could ask this question every time. Uh, in every press conference, you know, over the weekend, he suggested yet again that this is all sort of a hoax, collusion, even while saying he didn't say it was a hoax. He has said that it's Barack Obama's fault. He has, as you were talking about with Tom Donlin in the last segment, he has said that H.R. McMaster didn't appropriately represent his uh, interests as it related to the 2016 election. Today, he's been doing even more on Twitter. And then, okay, obviously, this is the overarching one that I think we always have to come back to, Donald Trump and Russia. So... We have 13 indictments. We have a 37-page uh, charging document that alleges a sort of widespread uh, strategy aimed at helping to elect Donald Trump and, and not elect or hurt Hillary Clinton. Donald Trump seems to be the person in the administration who doesn't believe that. The intelligence community does. Chris Ray does. Mike Pompeo, the CIA director, does. Can Sarah Sanders be any more definitive? And even if she is more definitive, will, will Donald Trump take to Twitter, per our last question, and undermine her as he has done so many times before? Will he say she should have said this? Right. Yeah. I what she.
said this. Right. Yeah. I what she Look at this uh, some live pictures of buses carrying students from Parkland, Florida. The buses are headed to meet the uh, Trump organization. But he's also giving a speech at the end of the week at a summit where Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi is due to speak. The topic, reshaping Indo-Pacific ties. That's according to the summit organizers. It sounds like it'll be about foreign policy. And that's not all, Wolf. While in India, Trump Jr. is also attending dinners with people who bought apartments in these new Trump-branded properties, which raises the really troubling question. Are these buyers investing in a Trump-branded product to access the Trump White House via the president's son? This, after all, is a country that has been steadily deepening its ties with the U.S. in recent years. I tried to ask Trump Jr. about the ethical concerns in Delhi today, but he ignored my question. Wolf? All right, Nico, thank you very much uh, for that report. Uh, Jordan Libowitz uh, is the Communications Director for Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics here in Washington. What's your reaction to this trip by Donald Trump Jr.? Well, Wolf, it raises further questions about just how connected the Trump administration is with the Trump organization. Uh, India uh, is the second largest uh, uh, location for Trump businesses outside of the United States. Uh, so when States, uh, they they make the argument these are existing business dealings. These these aren't not these aren't new ones. Is there anything wrong with that? So, the buildings are not new. The buildings, however, were agreements made uh, before the presidency. Now they're trying to fill the buildings. Uh, the Trump Organization takes a cut out of everyone who buys a condo, and takes a, a, a larger cut if they buy a condo uh, over the market price. Uh, it's been reported that many of the condos in Trump's buildings are selling well above the market price in a bad market. So we have to ask, what are people paying a premium for? So you believe it's unethical, but not necessarily illegal, right? Correct. So as a private citizen, ethics laws don't apply uh, to Don Jr. And the ethics laws that apply to the executive branch don't actually apply to the president. So while they're problematic and unethical, they're not actually illegal. All right, Jordan, thanks very much for that explanation. Jordan Libowitz uh, helping us. Uh, other news we're following, including uh, horror. It's unfolding as we speak, as children are among those killed in a Syrian town. We have new video that has just surfaced of dramatic rescues and truly heartbreaking images. You're going to see what happened. Truly heartbreaking images. You're going to see what happened. Thousands of Syrians have been killed in this in this brutal, brutal war over the past few years. Uh, let's bring in our senior international correspondent Ben Wiedemann. He's joining us from Beirut uh, right now. Uh, ben, first of all, what can you tell us about this specific? attack as brutal as it was. I can tell you, uh, Wolf, that the images you just showed are the sanitized version. We've been looking at videos all day long here coming out of Ghouta, and they are disturbing, to say the least. Uh, now, this has been going on for the last few days. The Syrian government uh, and Russian warplanes bombarding seemingly indiscriminately in this area, the eastern Ghouta, just outside of Damascus. It's home to almost 400,000 people before the war. Two million people lived there. And we heard from the United Nations humanitarian coordinator from Syria today, who said that within the last 48 hours, six hospitals in that area have been struck. He said...